Even the most modest TV show is a frankly massive undertaking, with hundreds of cast and crew members coming together for many months to produce a season of content you'll no doubt burn through in a weekend. And while it's always great to cheerlead a hot new show that takes the world by storm, it's far more common for shows to fall flat, sadly. While these 10 TV series have only recently premiered, if at all, the writing already seems to be on the wall. Basically, they're probably already toast. With that in mind, I'm Adam from What Culture, and here are 10 new TV shows that are already doomed. Number 10. Extrapolations A rare miss for Apple TV on the sci-fi front, given their mesmerizing results with For All Mankind, Severance, and most recently Silo, Extrapolations' buzzy cast invited lofty expectations that it just couldn't live up to. The recently concluded first, and perhaps only, season wasn't wanting for star wattage, yet ultimately failed to offer any fresh or involving perspective perspectives on the climate crisis. This is a show that makes the mistake of placing so much emphasis on its admittedly important subject that it forgets to be actually interesting, or have much in the way of basically compelling human drama. When that happens, even those who agree with the message will start to understandably tune out. Even the wildly overqualified cast couldn't do much to save this ambitious yet fundamentally hugely disappointing effort from the great Scott Z. Burns. Apple hasn't yet commented on the status of a potential second season, though it shocked nobody if this thing was quietly axed given that the completion rate is almost certainly dire. Number 9. Grease Rise of the Pink Ladies Grease Rise of the Pink Ladies is yet further proof that not all hit movies need to be franchises or IP in their own right. An unweirdly collision of fawning nostalgia for the original film, candy-coated yet forgettable songs that feel more glee than Grease, and clumsily integrated social commentary make for a series that feels deeply cynical. Unsurprisingly, reimagining a beloved classic with a more contemporary vibe doesn't quite work when the material is still set in the 1950s, even if it's the lackluster music and general feeling of listlessness which truly kills the show. Amid mixed reviews and not great viewing figures, it remains to be seen whether or not Paramount will renew the show for another go-around. But even if they do, it's tough to see it having much of a turnaround given the utterly indifferent response to the first season so far. Far. People aren't even mad that it's not very good. It's just they don't care, which is arguably worse. Number 8. Fatal Attraction Another Paramount movie that the network has listlessly adapted into TV format now, with Fatal Attraction, a new take on the delightfully ridiculous, Oscar-nominated 1987 psychological thriller starring Glenn Close and Michael Douglas. As brilliantly cast as Lizzie Kaplan is for the role of Alex Forrest, this wishy-washy update of the hit movie largely fails to justify its own existence, filling its expanded runtime with bloated backstory for both central characters, yet little of true interest. While it's clear that a modern take on the original story could have worked gangbusters with the right angle, the crime thriller elements are tedious, the callbacks to the original pandering, and even its more contemporary context feels rather half-baked. When you could just watch the considerably more entertaining movie four times instead of this eight-episode dreck, the choice is clear. With critics and audiences alike showing little enthusiasm for the show, it's destined to be forgotten within a matter of weeks. Not that there was much prospect for a second season anyway. Number 7. Twisted Metal HBO's The Last of Us series proved that Hollywood is finally taking video games seriously, and with TV shows based on God of War and Horizon Zero Dawn also in the works at Amazon and Netflix respectively, there's a lot to be excited about. Twisted Metal though, nah. As great fun as vehicular combat games are, and as unseriously as this TV adaptation appears to be taking itself, it'll need to work triple time to shake the whiff of overpowering cheapness that its teaser trailer delivered. Though we can only glean so much from a brief teaser, it seems to fulfil every expectation of a Peacock original, that is, rocking production values that feel akin to a fan film. The overwhelmingly negative response to the teaser has certainly pushed expectations for Twisted Metal through the floor, no matter how much one might like Anthony Mackie. Even with a wealth of talent both in front of and behind the camera, this has strong, cancelled a week after it premieres energy. Number 6. 
Beef. Netflix's Beef is one of the year's most exciting and unforgettable shows so far. A perfectly pitched black comedy elevated by incredible production values and superb performances from Steven Yeun and Ali Wong. Its first season went down a storm with critics and general viewers alike. So why exactly is it doomed, you might ask? Because nothing can ever just be one thing, creator Lee Sung Jin confirmed that while Beef was originally written as a standalone series, he was hopeful to continue the story in a second season if Netflix were receptive. And considering the show's strong viewing figures, it feels like just a matter of time before Netflix confirms that the show will be back for more. Except, didn't Danny and Amy's story feel so brilliantly closed off by the end? Sometimes less is more, and as excellent as the first batch of episodes were, it doesn't really feel like there's any more story left to tell. Turning Beef into an anthology series focused on a different spot each season with a new cast would absolutely work. But going by Jin's recent comments, he's far more interested in continuing the original narrative, which is perhaps less interesting. Number 5. Velma Warner Brothers' new Scooby-Doo animated series Velma certainly had an intriguing hook, functioning as an alt-universe take on Mystery Inc., with Mindy Kaling voicing a bisexual South Asian American version of the title character. This unsurprisingly caused Velma to be controversial even before it began airing, and that's without even getting into the wild divisive decision to leave Scooby-Doo out of the series entirely. When Velma premiered, critics were mixed on the show's excessively meta humour and relatively unlikable presentation of its central characters, while the fan response proved considerably more vitriolic. It is ultimately a shining example of a show that tries so hard to be fresh and edgy that it ends up being anything but, exhaustingly try-hard and eventually quite bland. While some undeniably bad faith critiques have been circulating due to the show's more progressive characterization, Velma's attempts to freshen up the formula ends up straying too far from what people actually love about Scooby-Doo. If you're going to aggressively veer away from what Scooby-Doo is, why not make an original show instead? Because branding, of course. Though a second season was already in development before the first season finished airing, don't be shocked if the show doesn't return for a third. Number 4. White House Plumbers On paper, White House Plumbers had so much damn potential a satirical political miniseries centred around the masterminds behind the Watergate scandal, played by Woody Harrelson and Justin Thoreau. With the show also being written and directed by some of the creatives behind Veep, the prospect of this being a major awards hit for HBO spoke for itself. That is, until anyone actually watched it. Despite the game performances and extremely distinguished ensemble cast, also including Donald Gleeson, Kieran and Shipka, and Lena Headey, White House Plumbers opts for a disappointing pointingly broad treatment of its stranger-than-fiction story. The wit and sophistication of Veep is sadly largely absent here, ensuring what appeared to be one of the year's big prestige projects released to mixed reviews, and has barely registered a pulse with audiences on social media or elsewhere. While the five-part series was never going to be a multi-season outing for HBO, they nevertheless expected it score them a few Emmys, right? Yikes. Number 3. The Idol HBO's new drama series series The Idol certainly has plenty of clout attached, with it being co-created by Sam Levinson and singer The Weeknd. The show stars Lily Rose Depp as a pop star who embarks on a relationship with a cult leader, The Weeknd, to try and win back the title of the sexiest pop star in the US. The cast is absolutely stacked, also counting among its number Jane Addams, Dan Levy, Eli Roth, Rachel Sennett, Hank Azaria, Elizabeth Berkley, and the late Anne Heche, but numerous reports indicate that production ran wildly off the rails. For one, series director Amy Simet suddenly left the show halfway through filming after shooting several episodes, with The Weeknd apparently feeling that it was leaning too much into a female perspective. Whatever that means, for a series with a female protagonist, Levinson took over as director from Simet's, though later reports stated that Levinson ended up scrapping Simet's work and reshot the show with a different narrative approach, which involved more sex and nudity. With the six episode series set to debut imminently, it might just be the hit watch of the season. Number 2. Citadel Amazon's glossy new spy thriller series Citadel has received a gigantic marketing push from the streamer, enough to suggest that they had something special on their hands, or at least something really, really expensive. Even if the show hadn't released on wildly mediocre reviews, it's a worrying sign that Amazon spent a tear-inducing 300 million on 
the first season six mere 30 minute episodes. That equates to around 1.67 million per minute of screen time. A budget far exceeding the price tag of your average Marvel Cinematic Universe movie. For something lacking the same level of high concept bombast. So how did Citadel become the second most expensive season of TV ever behind Amazon's own Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power? Reshoots. That's how. Last year, the decision was made to replace the showrunners and reshoot substantial portions of the series to the tune of $65 million. Evidently, Amazon believes enough in this aggressively generic espionage show to spend such an obscene amount of money on it, and has even greenlit a second season already as well as several international spin-offs. While Citadel's ratings were strong out of the gate, that doesn't mean audiences are going to remain invested in such a forgettable nothing burger of a TV show enough to return for season 2 later down the line. Try though Amazon might to make this their next big show, it's so incredibly easy to see Citadel flaming out and joining the graveyard of cancelled streaming shows sooner rather than later. Number 1. Echo When Maya Lopez aka Echo made her MCU debut in Hawkeye in late 2021, was anyone left craving a solo series focused on her? Disney confirmed that an Echo spin-off series was in the works before Hawkeye even began airing, and by series end, it was honestly tough to understand why. Echo was fine in Hawkeye, but of all the characters to give their own show, Echo? Really? Did anyone ask for this? Now to be fair, plenty of things nobody asked for ended up being fantastic, but given the vocal reports in recent months about Echo's rickety production, it's hard to be optimistic about this one. Combined with the relatively mixed quality of the Disney Plus MCU shows to date, and the MCU's overall stagnating interest in recent years, it's easy to picture this one quietly landing without much fanfare. Furthermore, Disney just announced that all of Echo's episodes will release on the same day, November 29th, which could easily be interpreted as them having a lack of confidence in viewers returning week after week. It'd be great to be wrong, but considering Echo was coming out more than six months after it was originally intended to drop, things aren't looking good. And there we have it folks, our list of new TV shows that are pretty much already doomed. But please do let us know down in the comments of your thoughts of our list, and while you're there, let us know which TV show you absolutely love right now and you hope gets more and more seasons. And make sure you give us a like and a subscribe. If you want to follow me on socials, I am at Strawn87 on Twitter and on Instagram. Come and say hello to me on there. Thank you for watching everyone. I hope you enjoy the rest of your week and until next time, take care.